Father, we honor your name. wonderful morning friends once again welcome to the potter's gate online broadcast my name is isaiah phillips akitala wherever you are joining from this morning i want to welcome you to another live session of course a very cold morning here please don't mind the way i'm looking this morning i'm just trying to keep warm so that i can you know you know do the work that i'm assigned to do this morning all right thank you so very much for joining me well this morning by god's grace we are going to continue on our session four on this excellent topic that we have been looking into but i just don't want it to be a topic i want it to be a time of spiritual awakening a time where we can enter into the confluence of heaven's prophetic intention and uh, you know declaration for the church of course I, by God's grace, am seeking to function within the reality of, you know, the, the ministry that God has given to me as his voice, as his prophet, as his uh, uh, spokesman. So I'm believing God, all right, that, that we will continue to allow the spirit of the prophetic to give us insight and direction in line with what the spirit of God is saying to the body of Christ. The scripture says, let those who have the ears to hear, listen to what the spirit is saying. One of the things that I'm praying and I'm hoping that will begin to take place, all right, within the body of Christ is that we will begin to shift from a sensual concept of thinking and reasoning to a more spiritual you know condition so that we can quickly respond all right to what the spirit of god is saying and of course you and i understand that the things of god are spiritual by design are spiritual by default meaning that we have to develop our hearing ears we have to develop a sense of awakening all right uh, when god is moving you don't begin to see cutting move all right. Oftentimes when we think God is moving, we want to see, you know, drama. We want to see things. The drama that we see at the end result of what, all right, God has already done. Okay. When God begins to move, amen, he begins way back, way back deep in the spirit realm where nobody, you know, is aware. The Bible says when men were sleeping. All right, the enemy came. You understand? The Bible talk about the ten virgins. Okay, yes, because there was a delay, they went into sleep. But God never sleep. Okay, so when we begin to express the kind of things that we're talking about, I need you to wake up. I need you to realize. I need you to understand the urgency. You know, I wish I've got a lot of resource in my hands. Okay, we we we. I would have loved to really promote this thing on a larger scale because you see. 
it, it's going to take some level of resource for people to know, for people to be awakened to what we're talking about. All right. One or two people, maybe you find them talking about this concept that we're talking about. But for us to be able to sound the alarm and awake people to listen, to understand the God have shifted from this thing that we call church and this thing that we're doing is going to take, all right, a sound. It's going to take, you know, some bell being, you know, rang somewhere. It's going to take us engaging platforms. It's going to take us, you understand? He has been out there. People need to be aware. People need to be awakened to what God is saying. But, you know, suffice to say, the Spirit of God is moving and we need to give clarity. We need to give understanding. People need to know, all right? People need to be aware. Of course, that's why we're here or I, I mean i've been awake since 2 a.m putting things together it's taking me about basically you know uh, uh, two hours just to put this together all right and it's going to take more than that it's going to require sacrifice it's going to require commitment it's going to require a lot of you know a uh, uh, concentration it's going to require our heart or right, being 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 realigned back it, 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 there's a sense of you know seriousness and coldness and lukewarmness of course we know that's the plan of the enemy but i'm praying i'm hoping that these teachings that we're doing will wake us up will bring us to a point where we can feel and 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 face the urgency of the heart of god because that's how change takes place if we're not aware if we're not awakened to what god is doing how then do we respond so I hope and I pray that this will not just be another nice message, another mm, where one of those apostolic message. This is not one of those apostolic message. This is a clarion call. This is a man, a clarion call. This is a call to for you and I, amen, to be repositioned in that point and place where our life becomes an instrument, amen. Yes, for the advancement. Because if God is going to move, God moves through people. And if people are sleeping, God will have to look some look somewhere else. You know, so I say, if you don't praise me, I will raise up stones. We don't want stone. I don't want stone to replace me in this season in time. I want to be able to function and carry out the intentions of God for my life. I see some um, response. Thank you so very much, Apostle, this morning. Uh, uh, my dear brother, Godfrey, thank you so very much. Nice to have you join this morning. Really, really do appreciate it. All right. I see somebody else joining. Say hi. Thank you so very much. Thank you for joining. Leslie, thank you for joining. Uh, Limba, thank you also for joining this morning. Yes, thank you, man of God. Really appreciate that word. Amen. Really, we, we need to get into the point. We need to get into, you know, a clarity of what the Spirit of God is doing. I'm just playing my own role, you understand, as the voice of one. I may be a voice of one, but I want this voice to be cloud and clear. I want this voice, amen, to touch you. I want this voice to reach you. I want this voice because it took the voice of one by the name John the Baptist amen yes to usher in hallelujah the days of our Lord Jesus Christ to usher in yes it was the voice of one so I, I, I'm not disenfranchised but I, I pray and I hope all right that you will support maybe some of you have already seen my Facebook timeline all right asking for uh, you know help and support yes financially because I really do need that all right you know I don't do that I don't ask I don't beg I don't know but I'm in a situation where I need you know people to support us so that the things that we're talking about this message can go out there people can hear it people can listen to it all right most of the things that we have been doing for many years on this platform has always been free and by god's grace i will try to maintain them as as free but i need your support if you love what i've been talking about if you appreciate this message if you love what we've been talking about for years please do support this work so that the enemy does not bring this work down but that's not the point this morning. I don't want to be distracted with that. But please do. If you're listening, you're watching, please go to my Facebook timeline. You will see something that I wrote there, you know, help, asking for help so that you can really hold my hand and we can continue to push this message. There are materials, books we're trying to work on. We're pushing things out there. But I need you to also respond and say, thank you, man of God, for what you're doing. We appreciate what you're doing. We will, we will support you monthly. We will support you maybe annually, whatever. But please do support but that's not the point this morning i really want to go into the heart of god okay yes this is a prophetic season and we're bringing prophetic clarity we're bringing prophetic direction we're bringing insight into amen the nature of the season hallelujah we're bringing understanding into the demand of the lord for this season in time whenever god wants to move amen he moves through Amen. He spokesman. 
And I can tell you, if you don't know that, I can tell you that I'm God's spokesman. God uses me. God have used me in the past. He's still using me in the now. And I believe he's still going to use me in the future. But where we are right now is that God is calling us into a different wine skin. And that wine skin, amen, we've been able to define it, amen, as a Daniel wine skin. Amen. We've been able to define it as a Daniel's mindset. Okay. We've been able to define it as a Daniel's company. And we're going to, amen, try as much as possible to unpack this man. All right. Even though he's not the only one, there are four of them, but you know, he's the arrowhead. He is the leader. And we want to see how this man, how God used this entity, this personality, amen, this vessel called Daniel. You understand who was a prophet by calling? All right, but function, amen. Yes, as a statement, function as a leader, function as a politician, function, you understand, as one that, amen, a hidden nation, a hidden king can trust. We're saying that that is not just, you know, another kind of, you know, Christian. That is an ecclesia. That is, amen, an instrument. That is not just some religious, a religious bunch, you know, of, of, of an entity. No, there is something God built into that man there is something god you know you know you know release there is something that person is made of that we want to extract that we want to amen unpack that we want to understand i I, i'm not sure if you get what i'm trying to say we need to we 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 need to what was the word i'm looking for now You know, when we need we need to take Daniel to the theater, you understand? Yes, and 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 cut him through and see what what is made, what was made of him. We 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 want to understand the inner structures of Daniel, we want to understand the inner realities of Daniel, we want to understand how he was able to survive, amen. Yes, in an in an environment that that you know that has become the very epitome of perversion of wickedness. Hallelujah. We want to understand how Daniel was able to live triumphantly, amen, in Babylon. Because that is, amen, the picture, the face of the church that the Lord needs in this season. If you and I are going to function and carry out God's prophetic demand for our day, either as a man, because we, I, I keep broadening, I keep, I keep defining this thing. I, I know that, you know, most Christians have been churchy. We've been churchy. You know what I mean by that? Okay. You know, when we, when we hear things, we like to interpret those things through religious mindset. And that's why I keep emphasizing. I keep bringing certain, you know, uh, uh, you know, definitions and clarity so that we, we don't reduce this thing to just, you know, going to church. You know, this is beyond going to church. You understand? We, 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 we have to begin to see that what God is doing today is beyond the four walls of a church. And please don't ever say, oh, Isaiah Philip does not believe in church. I never say so. I will never say so. I know that church is a place we go, amen, where we get to be resource, where we contribute our resource, where we build the things of God and go out there and manifest God's intention. The essence of the church is to change the world, amen, is to transform, is to redeem, amen, is to gather, hallelujah, yes, the world to the place where the intentions of God are revealed. But you and I know that that is not what the church, amen, is. You know, it reflects today. The church has become something else. And we have to deal with that. We have to talk about it. Either we like it or not. Amen. Yes, we like it or not. The God's prophetic voice. Amen. Yes, as, 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 as it came hard on the nation of Israel, when they refused to listen, he sent them on an exile. He sent them in capti- into captivity. He's going to do the same. He's already doing the same. So we need to wake up. We need to realize we cannot be myopic. We cannot be sensual. We cannot be sentimental about the things of the Spirit, particularly in this season and time so if I say things that touches your religious you know state and religious belief system just say ouch but don't stop listening because this word is going to change us we need to bring some critical concept of thinking we need to bring, amen, some concept of understanding, amen. We need to bring the, 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 the concept of analyzing the things of God. Yes, these are all characters of the prophetic spirit, all right? You don't need to be a prophet to understand and to enter into the things that we're talking about, but we all need a prophetic spirit to journey on with the Lord, or else you're going to get to a point, you're going to get to a place, and you're not going to see things, amen, the way it's been defined to you, and you want to turn back, you understand? We find examples like that in the scripture. 
let's go on uh what i want to quickly do this morning all right is first of all give you a recap of what we have dealt with okay yes just maybe we should quickly do that because there's so much that we need to touch on i hope so far that you know uh, you have been blessed by many of the things that we have spoken about we have talked about all right because like i said this is a now word and i hope this word amen is going to continue to minister to you give you clarity give you direction give you a foresight amen yes spirituality all right yes <clears throat> excuse me spirituality must be nurtured we we must grow in our spirituality okay there, there, there are no you know magic step there are no automatic growth in the things of god no there are process and principles and and values amen that we need to imbibe character attitude that we need to imbibe all right and then yesterday we began to deal with amen yes at the concept of how babel was established because i said that if we if god is raising us as a daniel all right yes to engage you know babylon then we need to know the origin of babylon and that was what we did yesterday, yesterday's morning. I thought I would be able to come back in the afternoon and continue, but unfortunately, I couldn't make it. So yesterday, we, we spoke a bit about, yes, understanding, identifying Babylon. And I think we did a good job yesterday, all right? You please go back again uh, 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 and listen. In fact, yesterday evening, I wanted to come back, but I felt I, felt I needed to just allow people to take in some of the things that we've talked about so that you don't have what you call information overload and that's not that's not to say that uh, um, there's so much that we have said that uh, you cannot process no I, I, that's not what I mean but I thought I should just give us that time all right to go through to listen all right and let this thing sink because you know these things can can be sometimes overwhelming you understand there's so much god is saying to us so much god amen is speaking to us and i understand but there's also an urgency and it's that urgency maybe that is pushing me all right to 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 kind of continue to release these things okay so yesterday we talked about you know how you know nimrod excuse me who was the uh, um you know the the, the 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 creator if you will who, who began amen yes uh, uh, you know the nation of babylon and he began by you know by creating a place called babel and we, we were able to track and trace and understand all right that this this nation that uh, our kingdom or empire that nimrod all right built you know by design was called him a confusion the babel actually mean confusion all right and we also looked at one one nature of uh, nimrod who the scripture defined him as what you know, you know as a hunter all right and so we begin to see into the, the the construct of what defined this thing because whatever we build is a manifestation of who we are i love that whatever we build all right your life your household is a manifestation of your spirit just as amen yes environment carries a spirit and the spirit of that environment is defined by the leadership you understand yes uh, environments don't just don't just turn up don't just manifest when you go to certain place and people behave or think and reason in a particular way or no is the is this manifestation of the spirit all right of the leadership of the domineering spirit amen that rules that environment so uh, so we can say categorically that babylon is the extension of the spirit of who nimrod and what do we see in the spirit of what we see in, in the nature in the spirit of Nimrod, all right, it was it was a hunter, all right, so it takes things by force, all right, it loves to kill things, okay, beyond the fact that, you know, hunting means survivor, yes, one can argue, all right, to say, well, but back in the days, one of the key ways that people survive is through hunting, yes, but this man is not just a hunter of animals, he's also a hunter of things and people, and we saw that, all right, in his nature and his character, and beyond that, we also saw that the city that he built, amen, the first city that he built was called Amen. Babel, and we were able to look at the the very definition of Babel. It actually means confusion. So you begin to understand, all right, that those who are under the influence of the leadership of, you know, Nimrod will be certainly manifesting the spirit of what confusion. And confusion does not mean that you are not involved. Like we, we said yesterday that, amen, confusion does not mean uh, a disorganization because Babylon was organized. 
You understand? He said, let us build a city. So to build a city, you need some level of organization. You need some level of administration. You need some level of resource. And we saw how, all right, instead of using stone, they, 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 they worked on, they used, in fact, they invented the concept of brick making. You understand? They said for, for stone, they used brick instead. And they built for themselves a city. And not only did they build a city, they actually began to build a tower. Now, for those who are into engineering who are into uh, um, you know a uh, city building and all of that they will tell you that it's not it's not an easy thing to come together and say you really want to build a city so we begin to see that this man you know is is well organized and and the concept of his organization of course comes from the order of the soul and for those who have been following me for years if you've been following my concept of teaching you will know that i've always spoken about you know there is a resource there's a spirituality there is a power that is locked within in the human soul you understand that you can live your life thinking you are spiritual meanwhile what you're doing what you're projecting is actually the soul life that if you're not careful all right when you put what the soul has created and what the spirit amen has created and you put them together you will almost not be able to differentiate them except you are a person of the word of god you're a person amen who has become a student in the word of god because the bible says only the word of god amen only the, the sword of the spirit can act actually divide can divide amen the difference between the soul and the spirit and that okay of course you know proves the point that i'm making that many of the things that we see today in the church that we celebrate that we hail as god and in fact they are soulish why because the bible says for by their fruit we will know them not by the structure babylon was built amen babylon is still being built today because today babylon has become not just a spirit babylon has become a technology babylon has become you know what the war system used to hold things together people use the system of babylon to hold their marriage together he says these people have been married for 40 years and they never had a quarrel no 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 they understand the technology of babylon and that spirit of babylon all right that is driven by the soul is what they are using have you listened to certain people in the world speak you go and check yourself again if you're born again because the, the level of intelligence the level where they're drawing their source from you're like wow yo that guy is speaking sense. He's not speaking sense. He's speaking from a realm, all right, that is illegal. He's speaking from the soul realm. Hallelujah. He's speaking from what the Bible called the wisdom of this world. Babylon houses the wisdom of this world. Just think about that while I drink my tea. You can run a business successfully with the Babylonian mindset. <laughs> You can run a church ministry. You can raise your family, amen, with the Babylonian mindset. Babylon people are very disciplined. When they want something, they want it and they get it. I don't even think, you know, 80% of people understand the operations of Babylon. And that is something that we, we, we tried to extract yesterday, all right? Because, you know, they, 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 they looking at things and trying to judge them, you know, listening to people and trying to judge them, all right, is a mistake. For you to be able to judge things and judge people, you have to have what is called the knowledge of the spirit. You have to have what is called the knowledge, oh, amen, the wisdom of God that is from above, that is not from this earth. There is, a, there is a resource, amen, that has been corrupt, that has been perverted, amen, that is of the earth. The Bible says the wisdom of this world is sensual, is demonic, is sensual, is demonic, but it's wisdom, is knowledge. <laughs> yes, when, when, you, when you go to, you know, uh, 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 you know, some of this corporate place, some of this marketplace, and then you hear that that guy is a billionaire that one is a millionaire and you you're like wow and they're not christians have you heard people say well you don't need god to be rich yes you don't need god to be rich but if you're going to be rich based on how god desire your life you need him are you seeing what we are extracting these are very important principles we have to know how to differentiate and quickly, I've got a scripture that I want to show you this morning. Yes. 
I, I, I was supposed to talk about this scripture yesterday, but I, I could not. But quickly, let me just flash it. This is supposed to be part of yesterday's, uh, uh, you know, uh, message. We have not even entered to this message. I'm basically giving you a recap of what we talked about, what we did yesterday. So, so far, are you listening? Are you following me? All right. Hebrews Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 13 says, For everyone who lives on milk, all right, on milk is still what? Watch that. I told you earlier on that spiritual things grow. And if we're going to enter into this realm, into this condition, position, into this template of a life called Daniel, all right, we must move. They must win us away from the milk life. They must win us from, you understand, the elementary concept of life. They must win us from carnality, soulish life. Amen. Yes. Everyone who lives on milk, who uses milk, amen, is still an infant. Did you see that? Is still an infant. Inexperience. Inexperience in the message of righteousness. In the culture, in the lifestyle of righteousness. Inexperience. Is somebody listening to this? But solid food is for the mature. <clears throat> but solid food is for the mature. So two categories of people now, all right, has been highlighted through the scripture. All right? The infant, the immature, and of course, the mature. The mature, all right, are designed, are, excuse me, are reflected or manifested through one thing the bible says through the message of righteousness not the message of faith not the message of prosperity not the message of uh whatever it is that we want to call it righteousness is the foundation you understand yes of maturity if you want to mature in the things of god righteousness must become your clothing all those things that I mentioned earlier, all right, are, are valid. They are needed. God needs you to prosper. He wants you, amen, to walk in faith. Of course, Bible says, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. You understand? Like I've always said, one of the problems we've had in the body, in the church, is that we, we, we love extremes. We love extremes. If you believe in one thing, you just believe that thing to the extreme and every other thing becomes, you know, error or lie. Or you, left, you leave it behind. But that's not the right mindset. The right mindset is always to find, amen, the balance. The balance. And that's why I keep saying, if you follow Jesus, if Jesus becomes your, your image, your focus, your focal point, you know, not faith, not righteousness, not prosperity, not healing, not deliverance, not, not, you know, it's Christ. Because in Christ, all those things, amen, yes, find their fitting. If you're pursuing faith and pursuing, you know, apostolic and you're pursuing prophetic and you're pro pu pursuing kingdom and you're pursuing God knows what, you can mention several of them, mention all of those things that you cannot even, you know, exhaust. And you, are, and you are not pursuing Christ as the focal point, you are going to fall into error. The secret of development and advancement and maintaining your growth as a believer is to keep Christ in focus. Is to keep Christ in focus. Not even the kingdom. The kingdom is secondary when it comes to the priority, you understand, of life. Christ first, kingdom second. Because the kingdom reside in Christ. You cannot fully understand the message of the kingdom if the revelation of Christ has not been seated, you know, effectively in your life. Oh God, help me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you cannot. You will go overboard. The message of Christ is the regulator. Is the plumb line. 
Did you hear me? The message of Christ, the message of the cross, hallelujah, they are the regulator. They are the dividing line. They are the plumb line of our life, of our journey, of our walk with the Lord. Come on. So everyone who lives on milk is still an infant. If you're living on milk, amen, you, you can't go on. You can't move on to certain order of a life. The Bible says such a person is inexperienced. Inexperienced in what? Of course, inexperienced in the things of the spirit. Just as there are experiences, there are realities, there are things, amen, we get to develop, we get to know, we get to understand that makes us skillful. And I'm going to be talking about skillfulness, all right, today, in the concept of this Daniel thing that we're talking about. You understand? The Bible says it's inexperienced. There are a lot of inexperienced people today in the church. Yes, they know the Bible. But they only know the Bible to the degree of their spiritual maturity. And based on that degree, that is how they get to interpret. And unfortunately, because they are not even aware that they are inexperienced, you who have a better experience than them, when you speak to them, they don't listen to you. They don't want to listen to you. All right? Yeah? They, they, they think they know better than you. They think they, in fact, they think they know better than Jesus. And that's, that's, that's the reason why you hear all these asundry messages today in the body of Christ. Some people tell you, God, you know, you know Jesus himself, you know, uh, 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 you know, walk in error. You know, that thing. I, I, I once heard, you know, a preacher from Ghana who, who said Jesus needs to be corrected. <laughs> I mean, you hear things that people, you, and you wonder, how did they come to this conclusion? How do you come to such a conclusion? That some people are trying to correct Jesus. They're trying to correct the Bible. They're trying to do... Um, do you know what it means to handle the revelation of Jesus? I told you guys years ago, I met this apostle from, uh, from, from, uh, uh, um, from Durban. Met him in Nigeria, 2003 precise. And he asked me, <clears throat> because somebody introduced, you know, spoke to, me, spoke to him about me. And finally we met... And, I, and that was a period God was began to speak to me about South Africa. So I met this man, you know, quite excited that at least I met somebody from, but he's an apostle, all right, you know, a, 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 a neurosurgeon by, you know, by profession. So he just asked me, he said, okay, uh, you know, so what is your philosophy of the apostolic? I said, the revelation of Jesus. He looked at me. He stopped and he looked at me. He looked at the other person that was standing by him. He said, what, so what else again? I said, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We want to unveil Christ. He just shook my hand. He said, you are my friend. We're going to talk more. I mean, that is it. What else to know? What else to understand? In my church, back then in the, you know, in on the auditorium, you will see this big, you know, a, a, a painting. And under that painting is a hand of a man, all right, holding the world together. And underneath is written the revelation of Jesus Christ. You, till eternity, they will still be unveiling Christ to you. <laughs> till eternity, when you finish and you go to heaven, you will still be getting to know who Christ is. You see, it takes a depth, it takes an understanding to know that all that you think you know, all that you think you have read about Jesus is just a summary. You wake up tomorrow, you say, you <laughs> and I look at this woman like, you see, that speaks to their spiritual foundation. That speaks to, all right, yes, their orientation. Who, 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 who led them, the disciples' prophetic school they went to? Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, it, it, that thing sound casual. The revelation of Jesus. But from that word, it summarizes every, every other thing you want to know. Uh, the throne. <laughs> who, is, who is by the throne? Who is sitting on the throne? I hear some man of God. They want to talk about, you know, the, the, the glory around the throne. They want to talk about the power of you know the prince of the air they want to talk about you know they, they, they try to make this thing look deeper I'm saying there's nothing more deeper than the revelation of the depth in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in him 
In him dwelleth. Do you know what that means? Now you want to bamboozle us with dimensions and thrones and, you know, and spirits and all. <laughs> you know, some that when I listen to some of these men of God, you know, on YouTube, I, I just smile. I say, God, help them. Carry on. Continue. When you finish, they will put you down, sit down. You will have to be schooled in relating to who Christ is. You see, all of that is to, you know, is to steer people who are looking for something new. There's nothing new. He's the ancients of days. Let me not just start with that or else I'll just get too excited and... <laughs> get myself distracted Ooh, but I, I, I love Jesus Christ you see God hides divinity in simplicity and that's where many of us lose it we miss it because divinity you know the glory you know I, 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 somebody was talking about okay let me not go let, let's 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 continue so we dealt with issue of Kush, and then of course I, 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 I want to introduce this to you. Kush, of course, was a father of Nimrod. Nimrod gave birth to a place called, you know, Babel. Babel means confusion, all right. And then, of course, we know that the, the nature of uh, Nimrod, amen, was a hunter. He was a hunter, and that word hunting speaks, amen. It, you know, into so many variations that is beyond just, you know, trying to kill, you know, uh, some veneer to eat. No, it's a nature. It's a nature, all right, on preying on things, you know. Yes, that if you are not careful, Nimra will pray on you while you're still thinking you're safe. You know, you know how hunter, okay, hunt for things, all right? Yes. They, they, they set things they, they set their prey you understand they, they, they set up things you're not, you're not aware you fall into the trap yes that's Babylon for you you fall into the trap you think hey there's money there let's go make some money you go in there mm, you are captured it's a haunting spirit you see that in Babylon go to the world of finance you will see the spirit of Nimrod manifest the world's economy is defined, captured by the spirit of Nimrod. Is the spirit of the bull? It's there. They don't hide it again. It's not hidden. And this is why it's not enough just to be part of a church, just to go to a church. You have to develop a, a different philosophy to life. You have to develop a different mindset. You have to build what we call the kingdom culture. Kingdom culture is not happy clappy. It's not, you know, Jesus, hallelujah, praise God. No, no, no. It's beyond the song you sing. The song you sing should be the expression of the culture, of the tradition, the holy tradition, hallelujah, that gave birth to you. Christianity designed by God is not the extension of your of your community of your tradition of your nationality of your culture no the life Christ himself lived proved that to us there was nothing Jewish about his life everything about his life contradict the Jewish society even though he was born a Jew but everything he represented contradict the, the Jews sold him out they will kill you <laughs> because if you don't understand that anyway, you see Jesus is a Jew who told you that they needed to bath him in that region because everything that God, amen, does on earth must connect to earthly reality because he's of the earth. That which is of the earth is earthy. And God, God created the earth because, amen, he wanted man to rule the earth. He created earth for man, amen, to subdue, to govern, to administrate for him. And when man failed in doing that, he had to bring himself as another man to show Adam how to govern. This is a message you need to take to the American church culture. 
to think that your allegiance to the Jewish society is what makes you a Christian, you are the most deceived community. There was nothing Jewish about the life of Christ, but they needed the Jewish community and society to to bring him into the world just like they needed me hallelujah yes to be to come through a nation called nigeria to bring the prophetic intentions of god to the earth i'm a nigerian but i'm not nigeria i'm from a different order i'm from a different planet i'm from a different i'm an alien in this world yes i'm in the world but i am not of this world you know what that means the things that defines the world, the things that captures the world, the things the world, hallelujah, run after and chase after and war after has no control over me. All of the things that people are fighting and bombing themselves are all issues of the earth. You think the whole idea of of Christ and Christianity and the things of God is just about a piece of a land, an estate, a physical land. Hey, you must, you must have been deceived. <laughs> that battle will continue until Jesus return, because the battle, Amen, of the of of the earth, of the soul of nation, is not about just a piece of estate. It's not just about a piece of land. That important but until a people who have an understanding of the real battle amen appear and begin to speak towards that thing the battle will not subside is somebody listening oh this is gonna mess up your religion <laughs> it's gonna it, but but th that did you see how God raised the people took them to a complete foreign land two different value systems two different ideologies two different belief systems two different culture Daniel has never been to Babylon before Daniel has nothing amen to 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 do they they it's not like they studied Babylon it's not that they want them okay this is how you must behave in Babylon no 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 So we have to move from an immature lifestyle. We have to move from an immature lifestyle. There has to be a taming of our passion and desire. If you love sin, which is normal for earthly people to do, if, 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 if you are in the world and you are not after Christ, you are not changed, you are not transformed, it is natural to love sin, to love the, you know, the nature, to love the ways of the world. It's natural. But when you come into amen, this life in Christ, you will naturally realize that you begin to develop hate for sin. When I say sin, I'm talking about the nature that governs earth dwellers. I'm not reducing it to just one particular act. That act, amen, is a result of a need. It's something you feel you need in your life. It could be sex, amen. It could be pornography. It could be, you understand, stealing. It could be, you know, lying. You understand? It could be, you know, being drunk. Whatever it is that becomes sin, that becomes a need, that becomes a need, amen, to the nature, to the fallen nature of man is what leads people into sin. Yes. How did sin got into the garden? Because a woman felt she had a need. All, all sin are connected to the same root. Is a root of a need. When you think that there's something you need in your life, all right, and you can't get it, amen. You will you will have to sin to get it. You hear what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you that uh, uh, when you're suffering from one particular, you know, sin. No, no. All sin are connected to one particular need. One particular issue is a need. 
and that need could be mental that need could be emotional it could be psychological amen it could be spiritual some people some people go into all you wonder why would people open their eyes and go and sit down in that man's church the man is deceiving he's working on you he's praying on you and you still go there and bow down papa because there's a need in your life because you feel that there's a need Sexual perversion is a manifestation of a need in the life of people. If you try to cast out the demon of, you know, you know, sexuality, perver- that's not going to solve the person's need. I can tell you that person, yes, may stop doing that for the past, for the next three months or six months at most. But that person is going to go back to that scene because you have not addressed the, the real reason. <laughs> And the real reason, amen, is insecurity. Insecurity, amen, is the heart of all sin. When you are not secure in God, you'll be looking for fig fig leaf. You'll be looking for something to cover you. You'll be looking for something to fulfill you. That is why many people cannot stand being alone. People have died, committed suicide because they've been alone. And I understand the degree of that thing until I found myself being alone. And I'm like, okay, so this is how this thing is. You have to deal with that area of your life. You see, what we're talking about has to change the entire scope, the value system of how we look at life. That is what it means to live in Babylon. You see... It, these things I'm, I'm highlighting by the spirit. If you don't understand this, the ah Babylon will capture you. <laughs> I don't care if you are the most prayer warrior, if you are the most God knows who you are. Babylon has something, they will scan you. They will scan you. They said we found nothing. Say, go back and scan him. Everyone living on earth have a loophole. Go back and scan him. They will send those demons. They will be scanning you. They will be monitoring you like monitoring agent. They will be monitoring you. They, don't, they are not seeking to attack you. No, it's to find a loophole. <laughs> well, to find a loophole. They will be scanning you. They will be scanning you. Scanning, okay. Uh, what does he do on Facebook? What, what does he do on Twitter? What are the things he likes? What, how many times does he spend on you know this particular kind of messages? They'll be scanning you. They say, oh, but uh, sir, it's clear. If you don't go back and scan me, I will give you a good one. They, they send them back. Aye, we found something. Okay, now, what is it? Bring it here. <laughs> As they're scanning you, they're scanning your motive. They're scanning scanning your feelings they are scanning your attitude they are, oh god help me they are scanning your thoughts they are scanning everything you see the devil has nothing new he only takes his time to study us to find a loophole this is a message we need to take to TBN <laughs> because of the platform they have not because they are big no we, we this message need to, it, it will set people free you see the devil is not the devil knows ah, you ah, this person can pray prayer warrior okay 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 that's fine that's fine then they create all kinds of occasion around your life they touch your child. They touch things that that touches you. Things that are that that you know that matters to you. That touches your core. Even priests have family. Don't they have family? As committed as they are to God, they have family. So the enemy will leave them and say, "Go touch their family," like they did with Job. Have you seen that they touch Job's family first before they touch Job? <laughs> Let me repeat that. Job's family was touched first. His kids were touched first. His wife were touched first. The thing that was stare. Not even my daughter. 
Uh-huh. Because the issue we're dealing with is how to, amen, how to triumph, how to live victoriously in Babylon. God help me. Twenty years ago, they know you used to love that song, but now you're born again. Now they've inculcated that same rhythm, that same song. They've inculcated it to, you know, to 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 Marvin. To is it is a Marvin song now? What they call those guys in America now? Uh-huh. Then they've inculcated the, <laughs> things you've left behind now, but church people are doing it. <laughs> Now, they are using Jesus' name. They are singing Jesus. But in your mind, you are no longer seeing Jesus. You used to. you now, The memory of that perverted song you used to listen to. And the way you used to dance back then comes back. Because remember, everything is stored in your bank. In your memory bank. So immediately they will look for the file of those things. You say, ah, come on. You see. The biggest church are dancing to you. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> what is your issue? Before you know it now, the memory. Have you have you have you have you have you studied? Have you noticed the power of memory? Things you have forgotten 30 years ago, sometimes all you need is just an image to awake that memory. Sometimes it's just a sound to wake that memory. Sometimes it's just an handshake. Sometimes it's just to meet somebody you've not you've not met. Maybe your old girlfriend back in the days, the school days. Now you're married, but you see the lady, and the memory comes. But woo, you're like, wow, hi. Ha, ha, ha. You're trying to be brother nice, but the memory there's a welling up of that. They will study you. And then the enemy, Satan, will wait for the right time. The right time. You think the enemy is in a hurry to strike you? He's never in a hurry to strike you. He will leave you after that fasting. You will finish that 21 days fasting. <laughs> the very next day of the fast, they give you a blow. Why? You say, but I just finished fasting. <laughs> Can I give you the secret? Fasting is good. I love to fast. I fast. My last fast, my last 21 days fast last year, the second day was the day I received the greatest blow of my life. The second day. I, I feel like dying. I, I wanted to die. We don't understand spiritual warfare. Our modus operandi, our definitions and orientation of warfare must change. Have you noticed that the warfare, all right, in the culture that Daniel found himself were very deep kind of warfare. They, they were no warfare that was done on the open. The open one, you know, where they finally erected an image that was the final blow. But the real one was a fight of values, a fight of culture, a fight of identity, a fight of your true image. Sit down and eat the food. <laughs> and this is the reason why I'm flagging the scripture. Everyone who lives on milk is still an infant there are things you cannot handle you can't go to the war of this kind of no 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 stay back they call for men to go to war but they say if you have just married <laughs> have you read that in the scripture <laughs> if you have just married please don't even think of going to this war because you're going to create problem for us. Because while you're fighting, you're thinking of your wife, you're thinking of your... You understand? So stay back. Let those who just marry stay back. That is in the days of Gideon, right? When they were selecting the armies of Gideon, they say, if you just got married, please, we don't need you. Because this thing would be too much for you. 
So stay back. Have you heard? When they were when certain people were called Galabo Shiamba, thank you, Father. When the king called for, you understand, yes, a people to come and celebrate with him at the banquet. They were they were close people to the king who were giving excuse why they cannot come. One said, I just, I just got married. The other one said, no, I just, I just bought, you know, uh, uh, you know, a land for, you know, for, you know, they said there's farming. Can you see farming all over the place? I just bought a land. We want to start farming. <laughs> I hear some people now in the body of Christ, as much as I love it, I, I love the concept, I love the idea, but they have left the work of the kingdom. They say, hey, farming is coming. Bill Gates is buying the entire land. He's buying everything. We, and you know the war that is going on with the full world now. So let's go into farming. People that God has called to be at the war front are going back into farming. That's why I'm asking you. You listening to me. If you love the things that I'm talking about and you don't want me to go into farming, you better bless, support the work that we're doing. Because it's all part of it's all part of the strategy. When men that God has given prophetic grace and sight, who are supposed to be at the war front, advancing and leading people to war, now because of food, because of lack, they are forced to they were do you know there was a period in time where the priest, the priest, the priesthood left their work. The priesthood left their work to go farm. That is part of what led the nation of Israel into captivity. The Bible says there was a time in the nation of Israel where, yes, the people do not know the true God and they do not have a teaching priest. So everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Where were the priests? They had gone into farming. They had gone into farming. But God made provision for the priest. Because the Bible says the tithe were no longer being offered up. Listen, I understand the whole concept about tithing. The Bible says anyone who's going to give must give to the Lord, amen, from their heart. You call it tithing, you call it first, of, first fruit, whatever you call it, is a giving to the Lord for the advancement. Because people have given to the wrong people, now it makes it a problem even to give to the right people. And I don't want this to be about issue of giving, no, no. But I'm touching something and I hope you hear my heart because I don't have any ulterior motive of the things that I'm talking about. I'm saying that there's a war being fought on various levels, on various fronts. That if you shift from where God placed you, if God has placed you, yes, to be in the market fr- marketplace, yours is to make money, keep making money, and let those whom God has called to be at the forefront, at the war front, Yes, be supplied. Nobody goes to war on their own expense. That's scripture. Have you seen when uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia were fighting back in the early days? There was a time that, you know, I, I think it was Ukraine had to, you know, bomb a particular bridge where Russia uses, all right, to supply food and all the things that their army will need, particularly food, yes. Because you don't go to war hungry. Remember what Saul did in the days of the war when they were looking for, <laughs> looking for David. <laughs> King Saul at passed a decree. Nobody must touch food. Nobody must touch anything until we catch this rascal. (laughs) 
And uh, while they were doing that, I know I think they were fighting with the Philistine. <laughs> while they were doing that, they were all tired, hungry. So his son Jonathan saw, you know, you know, uh, uh, some honeycomb and took some and ate. They say, "Hey, you are in trouble. Your father passed a decree that nobody." But can't you see how my, my eyes just, you know, lighting up after, you know, taking some of this honey? What's going on here? The Bible says people were eating. They were eating raw, raw food, dead meat. So they had to go and tell the king, this is what's going on. Then the foolish king said, okay, now, okay, everybody bring your food and you can make food for yourself. Nobody goes to war on their own expense. You want to win the war, you have to, amen cater for the stomach of the priesthood these are just strategies we need to understand so don't 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 think this war is just on the level of rabababa hat when you finish praying you need to do certain things i'm just bringing us to speed with the level of maturity that must come into the community. We must come into a new understanding of the demand of God. Remember what I said earlier, balance is the key. Don't let anybody push you to an extreme. Don't let, don't let anybody tell you that the work of God does not need resources, does not need money. Even Jesus in his day needed money. He needed, hallelujah, yes, people. The Bible mentioned the people who, who supply. These were the women who ministered to Jesus of their substance. But like I said, please... Please don't think I'm making this ser- this morning series about giving or what. No, no, please. It's far from me. But I'm telling you, it's an area where the enemy is neutralizing, you know, true prophets, true apostles, men and women whom God has called to be on the forefront. How many, when last did you hear people going on mission? Okay. Oh, Lord. You know, Lord, I don't want to talk about this, but the Lord kept bringing this back. So, it means God is addressing something. I will obey. When last did you hear people going on mission? Mission. I'm, I'm not saying mission to America. I'm not saying mission to Canada because this is the way you say we're going on mission. It's mission to Australia. It's mission to Canada. It's mission to Belgium. It's mission to South Africa. I'm talking about mission to the rural area where there is no signal. When you need to make a call, you'll be looking for where to get signal. I'm talking about mission that when you are in there, I read, I was listening to uh, uh, um, Elizabeth Elliot. The husband died on a mission ground. Killed by, you know, by savage people. They killed a man on the... Go read about that woman, Elizabeth Elioff. You see, you will understand when people say they have passion for God. And God still send her back to where they killed her husband. God said, do go back there. Continue the work that your husband began. Ay, ay, ay. This woman translated the Bible to the language of those people. I can't remember the name. I can't, I've forgotten the name of that area now. I know it's somewhere in South America. When last did you hear people say, ah, people from the, from the city, you know, from your job or, you know, people from America were going on mission to, you know, to the Amazon, we're going deep into. We're going to bring them education. We're going to take medicine to them. We're going to do the work of God there. We're going to teach them how to connect to internet. We're, we're taking technology, we, but we're going there. We will have to go through and face the mosquito and face, yes. When last did you hear that? Today when you hear church say we're starting a new mission. Look at where they're starting it. Yes, where the money is flowing in. <laughs> Are you saying Isaac God doesn't send mission people to the marketplace? I'll be the last person because I've written about that. I have material that speaks about the concept of mission. But I'm saying that when last, because mission has to do with your heart. Has to do with your heart. Can God send you to a place where people don't understand your language? Would you go for him? (laughs) 
can God send you to a, I mean, I remember when, 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 when God sent me to this nation, South Africa, there were a lot of researches I was making. One of the first thing back in the days that I heard is, which of course was just a lie. <laughs> see, almost every South African can they have AIDS. And one of the things that they were saying to me is, hey, how are you going to handle this thing? They said there's AIDS all over, you, you know. Of course, that was just an exaggeration. But even then, you know what I said? If God sent me there, God is going to protect me. I think I, I just care less of what people said. That's why I keep saying to people, no, this issue of, you know, Afrophobia, xenophobia, never really moved me. Yes, it touches me when I see what people are saying and doing, all right, to other black people. It, it, that impacts me. It affects me. But that would not be what would then decide my exit. No. If my exit is tomorrow, I will exit because I can hear God. That the narrative out there about South Africa does not change my love, my passion, you understand, my sacrifice for the land. And that's why you can ask me very, I, I don't know most places in South Africa. <laughs> People come, they say, oh, when I was in Cape Town, they say, oh, have you been here? I, I don't know. Have you been there? So, so, but you're in South Africa. Welcome. No, because I. I mount my post. I, you know, I mount my place of calling. Yes, from there we beam the signal into the nation. At the early stage, I tried to connect with this pastor, with that pastor. Oh, you know, I realized that many of them are not ready for the truth. They love church. They just want church. They were not ready for the truth. In fact, at the place where I was walking and trying to help the people, it was the pastors in that community that gang up against me. They said, no, this guy, we don't know who he is. We don't approve him. We don't want him. Yes. Want to change the life and the plight of the people. Here yeah, is material. Here yeah, are principles that we can use. Uh -uh. And that is how I began online work. What's the point? My point is, very few people can go into mission field where they are hated, where they are rejected, where there is no funding, where you, you don't know where your next meal is coming from. And you say, oh, God send me. No, <laughs> which God send you? Your friends and your family will talk you out of that kind of mission. You, those things are no longer popular. It's not far fetch from what we're talking about in terms of Babylon, excuse me, in terms of Daniel in Babylon. Babylon was a foreign land. Foreign culture. Foreign idea, foreign ideology, foreign belief system. Beyond that, Babylon was a nation that captured, that took a man a whole nation captive and rather than mourning and feeling bad and feeling defeated and fe these four guys they had a different mindset are you seeing immature people cannot be sent to the field particularly f to a field called Babylon People that have not been weaned. People that have not learned, hallelujah, to eat meat cannot be sent, cannot function, hallelujah, in a field called Babylon. For everyone who lives on milk is still an infant. Inexperience in the message of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature. Now this is the point. Who by constant use, not Sunday, Sunday, not Sunday, Sunday tonic, 
not Sunday, Wednesday, or Sunday, Tuesday, <laughs> who by constant use, who made, hallelujah, the things of God a priority, who by constant use have trained their senses. Can you see that? In psychology, they say you can change, you can train, amen, how you think, how you reason. You can be very analytical in the way you think and reason. You're not just emotional. You're not just driven by impulse. Who by, amen, the, the training of their senses. God gave us senses. God gave us our sense. He gave us, amen, the ability to reason and to think. And God wants, amen, that faculty, yes, to be trained by, Via his word, via his ways, via his principle, via his standard. When your senses become trained, you then begin to understand the purpose, excuse me, the essence of purpose. People go to church, they throw away their senses. They throw away, amen, their senses. The moment people step into church, it's like they can't think again. It's like their senses just shut down. And they don't understand that spirituality is the most intelligent thing. They don't understand that to be spiritual... <laughs> Basically, is saying to be intelligent because that's what spirituality means. What do you think spirituality is or means? Just to be praying. After praying, what happens? Prayer should give you insight, direction, foresight, understanding, insight. Prayer should give you strategy. Prayer should caution you. Prayer should give you boldness. Prayer should teach you how to talk to people. Prayer, to, prayer should teach you how to be quiet. Prayer should teach you, amen, not to always impose yourself. So, many of the things people call spirituality, in fact, are stupidity. They are not spirituality. I'm sorry to say, but that's the truth. When you are truly prayerful and you are truly spiritual, I, your life will be so regulated that, in fact, when the king sent for you, you would have solved this problem. <laughs> That's the point that we're making from the book of Hebrews 5.13. Because those who are going to go to Babylon must be people. Alright? Listen, regardless of how we go to Babylon, and we like it or not, we are all in Babylon. We like it or not. No matter how you want to define it, this world that we live in, yes, is the very expression, the very, you know, manifestation of a cosmos controlled by Babylon. The kings of this world operate by the system called Babylon. No matter how refined, how beautiful, you go to certain country, everything looks easy there, you know. People in Africa, they say, hey, if you go to where now? There are some countries now people go to in Europe. They say, well, you know, everything is easy there. There is no easy thing. There is no easy country. If it's easy, go and check why it is easy. Was it yesterday or two days ago? I heard, you know, that, you know, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the nation of Germany are um, making it now easy. They're, they're trying to, you know, reduce the, you know, their visa requirements for people, all right, because they're short of workers. So now, eh, most people in Africa, oh, let's go to Germany. Let's, I'm, I'm sure some people are already thinking, let's go and learn German. So we go to Germany and go get a job there. Yes, you get a job, is good, but guess what? You're still going to be a slave there. The reason why they want you in Germany is not because, all right, they love you and they, they, you know, they have, you know, you know, an open heart, you know. No, no, they want you to come and walk. I was speaking to one of our sisters not too long ago. I said because she wanted to call me, but she couldn't call me. I said I do understand where you. I understand your predicament. I understand that when you are in that place called the marketplace, 
You don't have time for yourself. Even when they say you can work from home, you don't have time. Because they monitor everything you do every hour, every minute you spend. Amen. Yes, it's on the tre treadmill. There's no free meal in Babylon. There is no free food in Babylon. Babylon, oh, green card, go to America. No, it's because they want you to walk there. When if you can't walk based on their values and principles, they kick you out. That's the point. If God, amen, wants you to go there, go there with a mandate. I'm just trying to buttress the idea that we all live in Babylon. For you, amen, to live in this world, you have to be doing something to survive. And God help you if what you're doing is counter the value, is counter the culture. Like me, ah, they will tighten the knob. That's why I'm out there asking you, please support what we're doing. Because what we are teaching, amen, is, is to counter the culture. Is to wake some of us up and say, hey, 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 wake up. You've been captured here. I'm supposed to be your ally, your greatest ally, because I'm helping you that even though we're in Babylon, we only have 70 years. One day we're going to return back home. Hallelujah. They say, marry there. Have children there. But don't let their culture, you understand? Don't be assimilated into their culture. Don't let their culture capture you. We're here because God sent us here. Did God send us to Babylon? Yes. I said, did God send us to Babylon? Yes. Because the earth is the Lord. I, was it yesterday or two days ago? I said, I made a statement. There is no place under the earth that God has abdicated and said, well, you see that territory there is called Babylon. Mm, they can have it. Do whatever you want to do. No. The earth is the Lord. Everywhere, every place under the earth. The Bible says the knowledge of the glory of God shall do shall cover the earth as the water covers the sea. So there is no place that we do not have a mandate to enter. There is no place that we do not have what? A mandate to enter and redeem and restore and reform. For the glory of God. How to enter and how to do that is a different game. It's a different ball game. It's a different system. Because I tell you, there are gatekeepers who are going to seek to prevent you. There are forces, powers that the enemy, you understand, has put at the gate. So where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> well, we want to, we to do what? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Asian doors be lifted up that the king of glory. You see, if you're not carrying the king of glory, you don't have access. Quickly, wow, <laughs> what a scripture. <laughs> Just this one scripture has taken me an hour plus, my word. Okay. Let me, let me just quickly uh, refresh your mind again on this one scripture because, we, listen, we, we have not even touched on what we have for today. I'll show you now. I'll show you now. Where is that one we, where we have for today? I have it somewhere. I'm not sure where I put it. So, because it's important that we do that so that we are not we, we are not just talking yes season four we're, we're supposed to be dealing with a session four not season four excuse me we're supposed to be dealing with session four this morning you see i've not even touched on this i was just trying to recap on the past things that we've talked about but you see god brought some new uh, uh, concepts and new ideas you understand so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna finish um yeah I said I was just going to kind of recap on this Ephesians um, 1 and 9 and 10. And then I'm going to come back, um, let's say between 11 and 12. So if you have the time between 11 and 12, all right, I'll let you know. 
but certainly I'm going to return back. Let's say let's 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 leave it for twelve o'clock so that I can have time to do other things. Twelve o'clock, I'm going to return back, and we would look at all right a session uh, um session four because this is what we're supposed to be dealing with. What I want to do it, I want to put the you know the the, the series in session so that at least we can kind of catch up we know where we are okay yes I, I think that's a better way all right to to do this or else we can be overwhelmed even me when i look at my note i'm like god where do i start from it's like you're overwhelmed because there's so much that god really is saying and wants to say why because it's a season there's a download from heaven and that's why i'm saying this is not just a message that you know you listen and hallelujah praise god and continue no please share this message put it on your timeline you know let people know that god is speaking to us us. all right hopefully maybe some churches will open up and say amen of god of course they've got to have a courage please take bring this thing to to us we want to hear this message because this message i promise you can change the spiritual atmosphere of a nation of a society of a community and of course of families is a now word It's a message we can promote on social media. So people can hear the now voice of God. The, this is the now voice of God. But there's so much that we need to unpack. You see, and I don't want to be touching them here and there, here and there. You know, I really want us to exhaust them, you know, as, as we look at them in, 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 in batches, in packages. You understand? Session one, session two, session three. This Today we're supposed to be dealing with session four, but we have not even touched it yet. So let's quickly finish. Um, where's that scripture again? Uh, Ephesians 1, all right? Ephesians 1 is just a scripture that I want to, uh, I know we've touched on it, but I just want to uh, remind you again of, you see, I've got so many things open up here. All right, in Ephesians 1, um, 9, I remember we spoke about the concept of dispensing, dispensing dispensation yes i know you've you've heard that word we've spoken about it but let's just look at it again as a recap all right i'm going to recap on this and then i'm going to stop because i don't want the message all right to hit two you know two hours i don't think people will sit down listen all right to a two hours message all right yeah even if you're doing something you know people these days don't have that kind of you know concentration that's part of the things that we're dealing with in our day. All right, the culture of the day has so reduced our level of concentration that once that thing passed twenty minutes, you know, thirty minutes at most, ah, you, something else is beckoning on you, <laughs> beckoning on you, and it is going to take. In fact, the people that I'm sharing this message with are people who truly are serious, who are ready, who truly are hungry, who want something, amen, yes, to be built within them. I remember 1990 when God began to engage my life. There were people that, you know, God brought into my space, materials, books. I tell you, I will sit for hours. I will sit for hours and just, you know, you know, delve into this material and just eat this you know materials and i will not stop and that is how i was built it, it it's gonna take discipline so you can be walking you can be doing but back in those days we used to have what you call airphone you understand know, walkman yes i will put on my walkman and i'm walking doing other things but i'm listening and then i play it and i repeat again i play it and i repeat it again so, okay i get that one you understand you have to develop an attitude if you're caught up by all of this distraction uh -uh. you can't do this thing by hit and run there has to be a passion. There has to be a hunger. There has to be a longing. You have to really, you know, want to be a student. We just read it in Hebrews. Amen. You, 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 you want to break away from feeding on milk. You want to come to that dimension of meat. My meat is meat that gives you the capacity amen, to become a doer of the things of God. 
all right milk is good milk help us to build a bit of calcium bones here and there but it's not enough you have to feed amen yes on protein you have to feed on the meat jesus said my meat my meat is milk will give you ability to grow milk will give you the ability to grow but meat will give you the ability to do (laughs) milk will give you the ability to grow but meat will give you the ability and the capability to do if you want to be a doer of god's word a doer of the things of god you have to feed on meat meat if you want meat go amen and subscribe to my youtube channel if you have not Go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You will feed on on meat. You will ha- there are there are prayer sessions that I've we've prayed. All right, for two hours, one hour, two hours, non-stop, just praying. I used to call that how to develop your spirit, man. That's meat. That's not for you know this kind of Christianity we see today. That you know no 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 no. You really want to build capacity. You want to build your inner man because that is how I grew up. Any person that is going to be a handler of the word of God, you want to handle the sword of the spirit, ah, they have to train you. You know that. Just as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. They don't just give you God and say, okay, go and fight. No, they train you. You are trained. You are trained with discipline. You are trained, amen, on how to handle that thing. You are trained on how to aim. You are trained. Nobody goes to war, hallelujah, without getting trained. Friends, we are in a war front. But our war is not flesh and blood. Our war is spiritual. And that is what even makes it more complex. The fact that it's spiritual. Because most people are not even aware. They just carry on. They just be going. They just be going. Before they know. Whoop. They're like, what happened? You, you are still looking for who hit you. What hit you? You don't know. Because you have not been trained to be sensitive. To be awakened. To be discerning. You just go. You know. The wind of life is just blowing you here and there. Ooh. ooh. No, you take charge, hallelujah, of the steering. You you use the wind, amen, to guide you, to direct you to where you want to go. It's not the wind blowing you. You you are using the power of the wind, amen, to steer you to where God has ordained for you. Like an eagle. An eagle, when an eagle gets to a particular you know, point, the eagle does not flap the wing. The eagle just keep the, the, the wings on the wind and just glide. <laughs> it just glide. Are you, are you listening, friend? All of this has to be done by spiritual training. That's why maybe I should quickly say this. One of the things that I want to be doing, all right, is to train people individually. So you want me to do that, all right? You will have to kind of register and say, okay, I need you to train me. I want to be trained. I want to be empowered. Because many of these things, we just talk about them. We release it out there. But people truly are not really bothered. So if you're really serious, you feel there's a call of God upon your life. You 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 want to, amen, yes, become an Annie in this last day. You want to be a Dana. You want to be an Esther. You want to be a root in this, Dan, in this last day. You want to be a company of them that are called remnants. I'm not going to be chasing you around, but you say, oh, and I, I really, I need to, I need to be trained. Then we can do that because that's what, that's what my life is, is designed for. I train people, empower people. We've trained people. So, all right, let's finish. I said I was going to round up with Ephesians. Um, Having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that he may gather together. What's my point? We have entered a season. We have entered a day. All right. It's not a dispensation. What do I mean by that? It's not, you know, a time frame of time no is a period in time an epoch if you will you understand this is what they would define as a kairos season and a kairos season carries a kairos message that's not something i heard people talk about we talk about the kairos season but kairos season are defined and known by the unique 
assignment, by the unique moment. It's not just a time of manifestation. No, 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 no. No. You have to understand in a Kairos season, there is a unique, there's a definite thing that heaven wants to do or is doing in that season in time. And I think that is really what makes Kairos moment, amen, different from just generalizing it that, well, it's a moment where God does certain things, where God moves. What is he moving to do? What what is what is moving the heart of God in the Kairos season? That is something we need to understand, okay? Very important. And this is what the word dispensation, that word dispensation speaks directly to a carrier season, to an epoch, to a time frame whereby certain characteristics, certain value system, belief system, template, amen, of existence gets to be manifest upon. The Bible says, at the fullness of time, God sent his son. At the fullness of time, amen. When the time came to fullness, Jesus, amen, came to the scene. John the Baptist came to the scene. What are you saying? This period in time that started, if you will, 25th, 26th of July. I remember making a statement to us in 2022 i said god 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 has given us a 10 years time of preparation let me put it that way 10 years from 20 2020 to 2030 i remember saying that that god has given us a window of opportunity to change our wine skin if you will to reset to prepare ourselves for what is going to be unleashed upon the earth. And and, and that's a general statement that impacts almost every area of our life. And we need to really get ourselves in line, prepare, understand what is unfolding on the earth. So, if you think this year's Olympics is just another time. Have you noticed how this Olympic is basically changing the narrative even of sports? Have you seen how a nation like South Sudan just took the world of basketball by storm? <laughs> See, God, God will use you know the mundane things to speak to us about powerful prophetic things there's a disruption taking place right now in the world of sports and that is what we call the church of daniel see the church of daniel must have insight to every area of life nothing must miss them because the church of daniel is a church that functions as a cherubim They've got sight within and without. Did you understand? The church of Daniel has got what? Insight from within and without. There is nothing that is accidental. That's why I said, this year's Olympics, as much as it it ushered in a perversion, you know, a, a rise of an attack on what defines what represents our faith as followers of Christ and our position yet when we look at that we don't we don't react to that we don't see that as oh these people just hate the church they've always hated the church they will always hate the church but we see that as a clear and call as a time where the church needs to change our wine skin, change how we think, change how we interact, change how we interface, change how we do community. That's what we see. If you see something else, <laughs> I have not seen that. <laughs> All right? Let me ask you, where is the one million match that you know took place during that perversion. Everybody came out, you know, oh, we no go agree or we no go agree. You know, you took your placards. After the placards, what happened? Exactly my point. We are, we are quick to react. 
But for those who are tracking God, who are tracking the mind of God, who are journeying on the straight and the narrow path, when they see something like that, we don't react. That pushes us to the closet. Because our war is not flesh and blood. That pushes us to a point and a place where we create cloud in the spirit over the realm of France. Did you hear what I said? With the kind of things that we've seen, amen, unveil in France and upon the nation, it tells us that our priesthood needs to become even more visible. And it's for that reason I said, we have entered into a season where heaven is dispensing mature saints, valued Christians who have capacity, knowledge, understanding, and the grace to represent the intentions of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I am done with this uh, uh, session. Let's say this is an extension of session three. So session four, by God's grace, we will look at um, by 12 o'clock this afternoon. Is that fine? I think that is something that uh, um, should work for us because uh, if we decide to continue, like I said, we have not even touched on what we're supposed to deal with this morning. So what I've done basically this morning was almost like a recap of, you know, uh, um, what we have uh, dealt with, you know, two days ago. And I think it's such a nice message. Thank you so very much, everyone that has joined me this morning. Wherever you've joined for, from, I'm grateful that you've connected with us. And uh, once again, thank you so very much. I'll see you again this afternoon, hopefully, yes, by uh, um, 12, by God's grace, I'll, I should see you for 12 o'clock. Then we will continue with session four, all right? Is that fine? Then we're going to do session four. I'll see you. God bless you. Bye-bye.